Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome one and all. Welcome to the Reach Plaza for today's Millennium Stage presentation brought to you by the Centene Charitable Foundation and the Marriott Foundation. Millennium Stage celebrates the human spirit by presenting free performances year round. Our onstage performances are broadcast live and available to stream on YouTube, Facebook, and at kennedy-center.org. Now, is everyone ready for a tube of Christmas? When I say tuba, you say Christmas. Tuba. Christmas. Tuba. Christmas. Tuba. Tuba. Christmas. You guys are ready. Let me give you up to your host, Chris Quaid. Enjoy. Thank you and welcome to Tuba Christmas. Merry Tuba Christmas to every single one of you. We are so happy to see you. And we're so happy that this was able to happen. We didn't have a 2020 DC Tuba Christmas live. We had a small online version, but we're so happy to see real live faces today. And I'm thrilled to have our erstwhile tuba players here. It is not as big, but believe me, they're gonna play five times louder, each one of them. So it will sound like 300 tubas. Every time I say that, our conductor gets a little bit more annoyed. And our conductor, he's been with us for a number of years. We're thrilled to have him back. I want to welcome Andy Hitz. So this is a participatory event, and we would like you to sing. Each of these carols we'll hear twice. The tuba players will play the first time through. And the second time through, we want you to sing. And to help you sing, we have his first year with us, our sing leader. And I want you to welcome Bennett Umau. Thank you very much. Not a great deal about this concert changes from Tuba Christmas to Tuba Christmas. And so the next line in my speech, it says, I didn't notice many of you singing that last tune. <laughs> but all of you are wearing masks, so I really didn't notice all of you singing that last tune. However, the next tune 
is set up for you. If you don't know the words, because these are very easy, all you have to know is fa la 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 la, la 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 la. That's quite an enormous sound, isn't it? Uh, we love to hear those low tubas, and uh, that last note, that's exactly why we're here, is to hear those low notes. Tubas, let's play the last two measures of that piece again, and let's hear that low note at the end. Okay. Last two measures of Deck the Halls. Three, four. Now a lot of that sound came from the tubas in the very, very back, and you can see them lined up. We have five brave souls, and they're not playing tubas, they're playing sousaphones. It's a kind of cousin of the tuba, and sousaphone is named for the great, great marine band composer and conductor, John Philip Sousa. It's one of the only musical instruments. Yes, there you go. <laughs> one of the only musical instruments named for the person who popularized it. He didn't invent it, but he popularized it. And we're going to hear those great low tubas in this next tune, and they're going to start off with the melody. God rest ye, merry gentlemen.
So many of our Christmas carols come from countries all around the world, and that's absolutely the case with this next carol from France, one of our most beautiful Christmas carols. This is the first Noel. Did you know that tubas can take a bow? Tubas, let's take a bow. Did everyone get a picture? Do we need to do it again? Do it again, take a bow. That's the part the uh, local repairman liked the best. <laughs> so during the rehearsal, our conductor asked a very, very interesting and philosophical question that I think we all need to think carefully about as we listen to this next tune. The question is, was there a bad King Wenceslas?
<laughs> Part of the fun of playing any Christmas concert is uh, that you get to dress up a little bit more interestingly than you do on all of our other concerts during the year. For example, Concert Black can be decked up by a scarf with a mild number of buttons on it. But also you can decorate your instrument. We have some examples here of people who've gone above and beyond decorating the instrument. We have lights here, lights in the back. We are missing the sousaphone player that could play messages, but that's okay. Some people decorated themselves. We have a man in PJs. That's strong. And even when I look out in the audience, uh, a lot of you are also sporting good cheer. And if you want to sport more good cheer, here is my shameless plug. You can get your own tube of Christmas hat and scarf and other accoutrement at the table in the very back behind the tent. So you can go around with your own tube of Christmas hat and it will, it will not look silly at all. So thank you for that. Our next, uh, our next Christmas carol did not start life as a Christmas carol, it started life as a poem. And it was actually a poem uh, about war, uh, about how war is this terrible, terrible thing, and how, you know, there's just man being at war with man is this struggle that seems so unnecessary. And, and this was someone who just poured out their soul about this. Later on, it was set to music, and it has become a Christmas carol. It came upon a midnight clear. One of our traditions here at Tuba Christmas is to recognize some of the members of our ensemble. You see, this ensemble has never played together before today. Everyone was invited to show up with their tuba or euphonium or related instrument. And then we rehearsed and put it together. And so that's one of the very unique things about this concert. We also like to celebrate that any ages, 
are welcome. And to almost prove that, we like to recognize our youngest and our most experienced tuba or euphonium players in the audience. So I want you to help me welcome, first of all, our youngest, under 10 for the first time in a number of years. Well, she's been under 10 her whole life. <laughs> I want to welcome Jane Bowman. She is nine years old. Those of you who might know the euphonium royalty would recognize the last name, and you might recognize the gentleman sitting next to her, her grandfather, who is Dr. Brian Bowman, uh, retired Air Force Band. I think Dr. Bowman was hoping for a, a get the top and the bottom award today, but he was beat out by our most experienced performer, and topping out at a very, very young 77 years old, I'd like you to give a warm welcome to Mr. Bill Bros. It is kind of ironic that Christmas is itself a birthday. And yet, to have a birthday around Christmas can be really challenging. You tend to get lost in the shuffle of everything Christmas. I know one of my nephew has a Christmas birthday, and another nephew has a birthday right after Christmas, and I don't know, I, I just forget them because it's Christmas, and I'm a terrible uncle. So I thought we would take the opportunity to celebrate someone who's having a birthday today. And I'm gonna ask you to sing happy birthday to this gentleman, he is 13 years old today. Zachary, where are you? Zachary is right over here. He is absolutely thrilled that we've chosen to recognize him today. <laughs> so we're gonna sing happy birthday, let's go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Zachary. Happy birthday to you. And hopefully that will make up for a lifetime of Christmas birthdays. <laughs> there is no easy way to segue into angels we have heard on high. And you just proved it. <laughs> Give you three, four. Ready, three.
This is the 48th year of Tuba Christmas. It all started with the first concert in 1974 in New York City, uh, which is a wonderful story about a man calling up and asking to rent the stage next to Rockefeller Center for approximately 300 tubas that he hadn't met yet. And it has grown into concerts that happen at the Christmas time in over 100 countries all around the country and around the world. On a typical year, something on the order of 20,000 tuba and euphonium players will participate. So we're... <laughs> These concerts were the vision of the great Harvey Phillips, one of the finest tuba players and teachers ever. And he began them because he wanted to honor his own teacher, Bill Bell, who was born in, uh, on Christmas Day. Bill Bell was a great tuba player in New York City, played with the NBC Symphony, and so Harvey put together these concerts and kept them going. He had a good friend, Alec Wilder, do all the arrangements, and ironically, Alec passed away on Christmas Eve, 1980. And so Harvey kept these concerts going as a tribute to these great men, uh, his mentors and, and uh, the great icons of our instrument. Harvey himself passed away in 2010. He used to come to the DC Tuba Christmas every year, and um, so these concerts have now become a tribute to all those great men, and also to Harvey Phillips, who started it all. And uh, we miss him every year, and we will remember him again this year while we play Silent Night. That was wonderful. Tubas, please take a bow. <laughs> Those of you with sharp eyes might have noticed that there was one instrument here in the front row that seems to be spouting itself uh, more than one bell. Typically, these instruments only have one. The sound goes in one end and comes out the other. But we have here in front a double belled euphonium. I think we have another one, too, in the back, right? One in the front and one in the back. That's four. 
The double-belled euphonium, do you want to explain about that? Yeah. Would you like to talk about the double-belled euphonium? This instrument was invented like in the late 1800s and they were made up until mid 60s. If you remember the Music Man 76 trombones in the song, they talk about double bell euphoniums. And this is one, it's a 1947 con. And uh, no, the sound does not come out of both bells at the same time. Um, one of the reasons this was used was when every little town had a band, um, you know, there might be a shortage of trombones sometimes, so you could make the sound come out of the small bell, make it like a trombone. Soloists would use it for special echo effects too, and today it's just a cool instrument. So here we are. So what I heard out of that is the second bell replaces a trombone. That's what I heard. Wonderful, wonderful. So. The next piece we're going to play, I actually dug up a little story about a couple years ago, and then I told it, and it just fell flat. So I'm not going to tell you that story. This is We Three Kings. <laughs> The past two years have been a challenge, uh, a trial without precedent for most of us. And the cancellation of the 2020 Tuba Christmas was kind of a minor inconvenience when viewed against the backdrop of everything else. We are just thrilled and honored to be back with you this year. But unfortunately, we're missing a couple of our friends. In 2020, we lost longtime Tuba Christmas coordinator Bob Palanche. Bob was an institution here, and you may remember him because he was at the registration table or he was always holding a historical instrument, a serpent or an Ophiclide. Those are his two favorite. And um, he was just a, a kind and gentle man. He was a repairman and he was a private teacher too. Um, and we just, we miss him, we miss him terribly. Uh, it's tough for him. 
And for many years, there was only one title Bob wanted that he couldn't get. That was the title of the most experienced player at Tuba Christmas. And that is because he was beat out by one man for many, many years. And that was Joe Lear of Milton, Delaware. And Joe, another institution, was here every year. And uh, his last Tuba Christmas in 2019, he was 95 years old. Uh, he also left us in 2020. So we remember our two friends, two legends, as well as a lot of others that we've lost over the recent years and throughout many, many years. As we, uh, we play the next tune, there's no singing for this one. Just listen to the tubas play Lo How a Rose Air Blooming. So every year we talk about Harvey Phillips, the man who began this, the greatest of all of us. But behind every great man is very often a great partner, in his case, a great woman, his wife Carol. Carol Phillips was a man of uncommon intelligence and passion and will. Iron will, trust me, people. She gave shape to Harvey's ideas, and she turned his passion into her life's work. She was also the mother of his three children. And as her name was Carol, we always celebrate her with our next piece. Harvey always dedicated it to her, and so do we. This is the Carol of the Bells.
one of our many traditions in this concert is to celebrate all the children that come and and we usually have them come up here and help me with jingle bells now this concert we're not going to gather all of the children in one tiny tiny space of air and uh, that's a disappointment but I want to hear the children sing this this is one of the greatest carols to sing because it, it just it, it sings itself and uh, this is jingle bells Thank you. I, thank you very much for that. Audience participation is what actually gets us at most excited about being a performer, and so we really, really appreciate it. I'm very, very happy so many of you turned out for this concert. Before we finish, I would be absolutely remiss if I didn't mention and thank all of the people here at the Kennedy Center who helped make this happen, from the volunteers, the people checking all of our vaccines, and the people who were ushers, and the sound and video camera people, and the guys who set up the chairs. And we're just thrilled that, that we were able to make this happen in, in, this, in this time, so I, I wanna give them a round of applause. Sometimes between all of the um, events and uh, the, the uh, extras that go along with Christmas, we forget that Christmas is supposed to be kind of a happy and joyous season. And uh, so this next carol is to remind you, this is Joy to the World.
Take a bow. Thank you again for coming, and thank you especially to those of you who helped one of our performers, whether you were a mom or a dad or an older brother or sister. I saw you guys lugging those cases. Make them carry their own cases. <laughs> yes, they can do it, but thank you so much, and uh, we want to wish you a very merry tuba Christmas. <laughs>